Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh in Panama City, Florida. We gather together to worship Yahweh in spirit and in truth on his Sabbath day. Yahweh is here to bless us with his word. He's here to pour out his spirit upon the people who hear his word and to enlighten the world of the promises that he has made to his people. Yahweh has not forgotten his people. We look into the news and in the customs of the world and we see a lot of problems and we hear about a lot of problems now. This is the month that they're pushing the election uh, process and campaigning process and everybody's throwing blame on one another. Uh, who's going to fix the problems? They enlighten the public about the problems. And most of us don't really need to be enlightened about the problems. They're here. Uh, in our business, in our daily lives, the, the world is in chaos. But what we need to do is let Yahweh give, uh, show us his promise. And his promise is something that most people don't look at especially in the religious world. Now we can expect the people that don't read the Bible not to understand, but the people who read the Bible should understand what Yahweh is doing. And he has promises to his people. The promise that people need to really understand is Yahweh shall again choose Israel. Most people don't know who Israel is. Even the Israelites don't know who they are because very few people read the scripture. Some people look at it and memorize some verses and use them as tools in the conversation. But you need to sit down and just read what Yahweh has to say. And I tell people it's like this. Yahweh Father has written his children a letter from home. Yahweh is sending a letter to you. And when you read that letter, this is a personal thing between you and Yahweh. It's not some hierarchy that's throwing demands on your life. It's Yahweh, a father, who is tenderly communicating with his children and explaining to them what lies in the future for you. So Yahweh shall again choose Israel. In Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1, because Yahweh has compassion on Yaakov and shall again choose Israel and give them rest in their own land. The strangers shall join them and they shall cling to the house of Yaakov. Now see, think about what Yahweh is saying through these words and it is to us. If we are Israel, first people really need to find out where Israel has been driven, where Israel has gone. And is this relevant today or is this some ancient scripture about some ancient people that has already passed off the face of the earth. I mean, that's the way the attitude of the world is today when they think about reading these scriptures. But this is personal to you. This just gives you something to enlighten your mind that uh, Yahweh is literally speaking to you. Verse 2, The peoples shall take them and bring them to their own place. And the house of Israel shall possess them for servants and female servants in the land of Yahweh. And they shall make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. Now there are coming a day that the servitude of Israel who has been captive of the world is going to turn over and rule and the uh, nations are going to be their captives. And see, 
the average person don't realize what the word Israel means. They think it is talking about a few Jews somewhere. And they talk about in Israel-Palestine today. Uh, we have Jews scattered all over the world in every country. There's Russian Jews, there's Chinese Jews, there are Jews in, in just about every place in Australia and the United States and all of Europe, European countries. But Yahweh is speaking to the collective 13 houses of Israel. And this is what we need to know. And it shall be in the day Yahweh gives a, you rest from your sorrow and from your trouble and the hard service in which you were made to serve. And when you look over the migration of the peoples of the world in the last uh, 2,000 years, it's been a hard migration. And you shall take up this proverb against the sovereign of Babel and say how the oppressors had, uh, the oppressor has ceased and the gold gatherer ceased. How is the oppressor ceased? In verse 5, Isaiah 14 and 5. Yahweh has broken his staff of the wrong and the scepter of uh, the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with careless, uh, ceaseless blows, he who rules the Gentiles in displeasure is persecuted and no one restrains. In other words, the oppressor has been turned around. All the earth is at rest and at peace. They shall break forth into singing. See, it's time that the people understood this and sang about the deliverance that Yahweh has given to us. In uh, verse 8, he says, Even the cypress trees rejoice over you. The cypress is a choice tree for timber and uh, other valuables. The cedars of Lebanon saying, Since you were cut down, no woodcutter has come up against us. Now this is metaphoric language. You can uh, attach it to what it's talking about in reality. He said the grave from beneath is excited about you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you. All the chief ones of the earth it has raised up from their thrones all the sovereigns of the Gentiles. And that this is metaphoric language meaning there is a promise of a resurrection. The graves are going to be open. The people who have walked this earth and uh, lived their life and died and sleep in the dust are going to be raised. And Israel is the principal one to be raised because Israel's name is the promise of the uh, earth. Israel's name means he shall rule as El. And when we get that understood, the Israelite nations are supposed to rule the other nations in righteous ruling, not in domination. Israel today is not applying itself to be the servant of Yahweh. They're oppressing the people. All governments today, no matter who, how benevolent they are, are oppressing the people. And we are privileged to live in the United States as the least oppressive of the world, but it's still oppressive. We are overtaxed. We're overburdened with bureaucratic <coughs> nonsense. Our resources is not being distributed to the people. So we can see a lot of problems. And uh, the verse 10, it says, All of them respond and say to you, Have you also become weak as we? Have you become like us? 
your arrogance has been brought down to the grave and the sound of your stringed instruments the maggot is spread under you and worms cover you and now this is Yahweh speaking to the people and Isaiah is the scribe who wrote this in a book so we have it the letter from home Yahweh's letter from home and when we're reading this Yahweh is talking to us in a person to person understanding he says in verse 12 how you have fallen from the heaven O Hillel or Satan son of the morning you have been cut down to the ground you who laid uh, low the Gentiles or the nations see Satan has con deceived the nations he laid them low he brought them down in self-esteem in understanding in blindness all of the things about understanding he has destroyed in the minds of the people they have lost sight of who they are where they're from what they're doing and where they're going most people think they're dying going in the grave and they're going to be resurrected and go to heaven but keep listening to what Yahweh is speaking in the, the scripture he says let me go up above the heights of the clouds let me be like the most high Satan wants to be position himself in the minds of the people as the most high he causes doubt uh, when you think you know something Satan can confuse you about it when Yahweh tells us to do something Satan tells us to do opposite most people follow Satan because they do opposite verse 15 but you are brought down to the grave to the side of the pit those who see you stare at you and ponder over you saying is this the man who made the earth tremble who shook reins or the kingdoms or the rulerships who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities who would not open the house of his prisoners and we can see the condition of the world today and this is basically how it is I expect that the prisons hold more population now than they ever have in all countries in the history of the world and many people are prisoners in a prison and don't even realize they're in a prison walking around on the streets because we're entrapped in a uh, misunderstanding of what Yahweh is doing and who Yahweh is doing it for nobody realizes who Israel is and it's a study that takes months to go through to understand just where Israel has been migrated to some of the promises has been fulfilled and nobody even asks the questions nobody knows the answer but it's time for Yahweh's word to be listened to and understand verse 18 all the sovereigns of the Gentiles all of them were laid uh, in esteem everyone in his own house but you have been thrown uh, uh, from your grave like an abominable branch like the garment of those who are slain thrust through with a sword who go down to the stones of the pit like a trampled corpse you are not joined with them in burial you for you have destroyed your land and slain your people let the seed of the evildoers never be mentioned and now this is Yahweh speaking about Satan's influence over the nations and the results it's what it is it's metaphoric language and, and that's something that most people are not taught in churches of how to understand what the book is saying 
Prepare his children for slaughter because of the crookedness of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. And see, there's more cities with light shining at night now than ever has been. If you see the uh, satellite images of, on television, they uh, show the whole United States in one picture and with the lights where the cities are at night and the whole uh, country looks like it's lit up. And I shall rise again, no, I, I, I shall rise up against them, declares Yahweh of hosts, and shall cut off from Babel the name and the remnant uh, and offspring and descendants, declares Yahweh. I shall make it a possession for a porcupine in the marsh of muddy water, and shall weep it, uh, or sweep it uh, with the broom of destruction, declares Yahweh. Now Yahweh is bringing himself into it personally, how he's going to uh, bring about a correction. Yahweh of hosts has sworn, saying, Truly, this I have planned, so shall it be. And as I have proposed, so it stands. And if Yahweh is saying this to us, it's going to be. We, we just have to come to the understanding of it so it makes sense to us. It's not some archaic language laying in a book that's been laid on, on a shelf somewhere. And we are reluctant to read it because it's hard to understand. It's not that kind of book. It is a letter from Father to the people who hear. It is our personal letter that we need to understand. He says, to break Asher in my land. And Asher was a, a, a metaphoric name for Asher, uh, the Assyrian Empire that carried Israel away into captivity in the first t uh, carrying away of the house of Israel. He left Judah to stand for a, a few hundred years. But uh, Israel went in first. And then he goes on to say, uh, To break Asher in my land and tread him down on my mountains and his yoke shall be removed from uh, them and his burden removed from their shoulders. See, the influences of the other nations who have crushed the nations and put them under bondage is going to be removed. And this is continuing in verse 26. This is the counsel that is counseled for all the earth. This is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For Yahweh of hosts has counseled. And who annuls it? And his hand that is stretched out. Who turns it back? This is the message which came in the year of the sovereign of Ahaz died. Do not rejoice all you of Philistia that the rod that smote you is broken for out of the serpent's roots comes forth an adder and its offspring is a fiery flying serpent the first there's a and the firstborn of the poor shall feed and the needy lie down in safety and I shall kill your roots with scarcity of food, and it shall uh, slay your remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, melt away, all you of Philistia. And that's the evil nations and governmental powers. For smoke shall come from the north, and there is no stranger in his ranks. And what goes... Now, what does one answer the messenger of the nation? That Yahweh has founded Zion and the poor of his people take refuge in it. That's 
these little congregations scattered all over the world is what Yahweh has founded for people to take refuge in and get away from the hubbub of the world and let Yahweh speak to his people. Let Yahweh encourage his people to open their minds and open their hearts and receive the promises. They're greater than even we can imagine. It does away with confusion and fairy tales of religion that don't accomplish what Yahweh wants. In verse 2, Thus said Yahweh, A people escaped from the sword found favor in the wilderness. Israel, when it went to find rest. Israel today is in the wilderness. It went in the wilderness in ancient times and it has been in the wilderness all the way through the modern times. And that is who Yahweh is speaking to. Yahweh appeared to me from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I shall draw you with kindness. Yahweh don't draw us with fear. You know, you, you've heard preachers get in the pulpit and scare the congregation half to death, say, you're dying and going to hell, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. But Yahweh is seeking us out with tender, loving care. I am going to build you again. Israel, wherever you are, is going to be built again. And you shall be rebuilt, O maiden of Israel. Again, you shall take up your tambourines and go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. Can you imagine to go into a feast and hear the music and the uh, instruments playing and everybody rejoicing? The whole nation, if it was the whole nation rejoicing at one time, wouldn't that be a marvelous thing? Again, you shall plant vines on the mountains of Shemaron, and the planters shall plant and treat them as common. The richness of the plains of the wheat and grain, the witnesses, uh, riches of the vineyards and the orchards is going to be as common. That means that we can just have food in abundance, no matter what it is, from peanuts to grapes, to peanuts to figs, all of that, all of the food that we would eat would be as common because it's plentiful. And everyone is freely supplied, not with hell, not starved, and not cut off. Verse 6, For there shall be a day when the watchmen cry on the mount, Ephraim, and this is a key uh, name, the people need to follow Ephraim through the pages of the scripture. Arise and let us go up to Zion. To Yahweh our Elohim, for thus saith Yahweh, sing with gladness for Yaakov, and shout among the uh, chief of the nations, cry out, give praise, and say, Oh, save your people, the remnant of Israel. That's our prayer. Save the remnant of Israel, and we are it. See, I am bringing from them from the land of the north, and I shall gather them from the ends of the earth. Now, you want to know where Israel is? They're from the north and the ends of the earth. And you can follow their migrations, and you can see how they have come. Among them, and build, and the, uh, and the lame, those who with child, and those in labor together, a great assembly returning here. They're going to still be a flourishing nation, even with their infants returning. He says, with weeping, they shall come, and with their prayers, I bring them. I shall make them walk by the rivers of water in the straight way, and in which they do not stumble. For I shall be a father to Israel and to Ephraim. He is my firstborn. 
Can you think about that promise as your personal promise to Yahweh, from Yahweh? Hear the word, O Yahweh, O Gentiles, and declare, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel gathers him, and shall guard him as a shepherd his flock. Israel again will be chosen. Jeremiah 31 and 11. For Yahweh shall ransom J uh, Jacob and redeem him uh, from the hand of one stronger than he. Now Jacob is the father name that was changed to Israel when he became anointed by Yahweh and all his descendants through the entire uh, 13 houses is who he's talking about and Yahweh is the one that scattered them through the world and the one, he's the one that is bringing them back he said then they shall come in and shall sing on the height of Zion and stream to the goodness of Yahweh for uh, grain and for new wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and the herd and their being shall be like a well watered garden and never languish again we will never go through the the depressions of the man-made world and languish he said then shall a maiden rejoice in a dance and young men and old together and I shall turn their mourning to joy and I shall comfort them and shall make them rejoice from their sorrow and this is our promise from my father and shall fill the being of the priest with fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness declares Yahweh Thus saith Yahweh, a voice was heard in Ramah, wailing bitter, weeping Ra Raquel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they were no more. That's Mother Rachel weeping for the children of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, hold back your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for there is a reward for your work declares Yahweh and they shall return from the land of the enemy we have a reward as our promise that we return and he says and there is ex uh, expectancy for your latter end and see he's talking about even from now in the future the latter end and we are probably in the edge of the latter end. We don't know how soon it can be. It could be within 30 years. For sure, within the next 100 years. Of him fulfilling this scripture. For everything is right. It was just his time. Has got, he's got to do it on his time. He says, and there is expectancy in your latter end declares Yahweh and your children shall return to their own country I have clearly heard Ephraim lamenting you have chastised me and I was chastised like an untrained calf and you look at the nature of the nations especially the, the modern nations that, that our descendants we fit that description in metaphoric language he says turn me back and I shall turn back for you are Yahweh my Elohim his people needs to turn back to his mind and his thought and separated ourselves from the fiction and the false doctrines he says for after my turning back I repented and after I was instructed I struck myself on the thigh I was ashamed even humiliated for I bore the reproach of my youth is Ephraim a precious son to me? A child of delights? Yahweh was delighted in Ephraim and the house of Israel. He says, For 
Though I spoke against them, him, I still remember him. That is why my affections were deeply moved for him. I have great compassion for him, declares Yahweh. Set a, a signpost. Make landmarks. Set your heart toward the highway. And make in which you went. Turn back, O maiden of Israel. Turn back to these cities of yours. He's beckoning us to come back and return to him. Till when would you turn here and there, O backsliding daughter? For Yahweh has created what is new on earth. A woman encompasses a man. And thus said Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, let them once again say this word in the land of Yehuda. And it is cities. When I turn back their captivity, Yahweh bless you, O home of righteousness, mountain of set apartness. See, our nation should be a mountain of set apartness, not conforming to evil ways of the earth. Verse 24 And in Yehuda, and in all its cities, farmers and those who journey with flocks shall dwell together. For I shall fill the weary being, and I shall replenish every grieved being. At this I awoke and look, or looked around, and my sheep was, uh, my sleep was sweet with, uh, to me. And this is Yahweh speaking to his people. Key verse. Verse 27. See, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, that I shall sow the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda with the seed of man and the seed of bees. And it shall be that as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so I shall watch over them to build and to plant declares Yahweh. Yahweh is in the process of rebuilding Israel when he complete, makes completion of this prophecy. He said, In those days they shall no longer say, The fathers ate sour grapes and the children's teeth were blunted. That means we picked up from generation to generation the problems with our families. But each one shall die in his own crookedness whoever eats sour grapes his teeth shall be blunted see the days are coming declares Yahweh when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda and this is a key verse for in the for most people that think it's all one and they're all Jews Yahweh uh, didn't do it like most people think. The whole house of Israel, the house of Yehuda, is one family. Now, I'm going to read this uh, 31st verse. See, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda. And then we have a key verse in Hebrew uh, 8 and 11. And it's in Hebrews 8 and 11. And they shall by no means teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, because they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Because I shall forgive their unrighteousness. And their sins and their lawlessness I shall no longer remember. Yahweh is the one that's going to deliver us from sin. He is the one that's going to forgive us of sin. Not that we, we don't deserve it, but he's going to give it anyway. He says, uh, by saying renewed 
he has made the first old. Now what becomes old and growing age is nearing disappearing. In Hebrews 10 and 16, this is the covenant that I shall make with them after those days, says Yahshua, giving my laws into their hearts. See, this is, is something that most people get mixed up. He's going to put his laws in our hearts. When we read these scriptures and we memorize them and we practice them till they become part of our being, it's not something that you can remember every key letter, but it becomes real and, and live in your heart. He says, and in their minds I shall write them. Yahweh is going to write on our minds. And their sins and their lawlessness I shall remember no more. Verse 18. Now where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer slaughter offering for sin. We don't have to pay for our own sin because there is forgiveness. And that's where he comes up with his idea of deliverance from sin. And uh, verse 19. So brothers, having boldness to enter into the set-apart place by the blood of Yeshua. People want to know why did Yeshua have to die on the stake? They dramatize it. They misuse it. They read about it. They talk about it. But most people don't really understand it. But Yahshua is the one that paid for the sin debt so we could have deliverance. By a new and living way, verse 20, which he instituted for us through the veil that is his flesh. The flesh that he brought down to this earth was the veil between us and sin. He said, And having the high priest over the house of Elohim, let us draw near with a true heart in completeness of belief. So when we believe, let it be with a true heart. And let us come draw near to him. And that means study his word, fellowship with his people, and uh, be delivered from sin. Uh, having our hearts sprinkled from a wicked conscience and our bodies washed with clean water. See, this is basically how you get rid of sin. Let us hold fast the confession of our expectation without yielding. For he who promised is trustworthy. Yahweh has promised through Yahshua to us that he is going to help us live this life. And that's why we need to be on the same page he's on. He says, And he, no, and let us be concerned for one another in order to stir up love and good works. Everybody, and, and we, we see that manifested in this congregation. Everybody loves one another. Everybody helps one another. And we stir one another up toward good works. We're not overbearing. We don't condemn you because uh, you might have sin or, or you don't live in the wrong neighborhood or something like that. that that's not even manifested. We're talking about perfection in Yahweh's love. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the habit of some, but encouraging and so much more as you see the day coming near. We need to encourage one another. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27, For the son of Adam is going to come in the esteem of his father and his messengers, and then he shall reward each according to his works. Yahshua is destined to come shortly to us. Verse 28, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death 
at all until they see the son of Adam coming in his reign. In Psalms chapter 62 and verse 11, Elohim has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that strength belongs to Elohim and, the, and kindness is yours, O Yahweh, for you reward each one according to his works. Yahweh is kind to his people. He is kind to us today because he is letting us understand what this scripture is saying. It's a message from him to us personally. We're receiving it. And it's going to manifest itself. In Jeremiah 31 and verse 32, Not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and to bring them out of the land of Mitzrayim, my covenant which they broke though I was a husband to them declares Yahweh so Yahweh gave Israel the covenant for a purpose and they broke it and everybody has broken it since until today the, the population today is breaking the covenant he says verse 33 for this is the covenant I shall make with the house of Israel after those days which days the days at the end after the uh, generation on earth declares Yahweh I shall put my Torah in their inward parts Yahweh is putting his Torah in the hearts of his people those who are hearing my voice today many have the words uh, imparted into their being it's part of their daily life and write it on their hearts and they, I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people that is the status that we want to find ourselves working diligently in and enjoying the blessings verse 34 and no longer shall they teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother saying no Yahweh for he, they shall know me, all know me. Yahweh is going, uh, going to make sure that all know him. And we are encouraged to feed off of his word and let it manifest itself in us today. From the least of them to the greatest of them declares Yahweh for I shall forgive their crookedness and remember their sin no more. That's our promise from Elohim. He said thus said Yahweh who gives the sun for a light by day and the laws of the moon and the stars for a light by night who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. That is your father. He's the one that did all of this. And he is done, has done it for all of his children. He says uh, in 36, If these laws vanish, now listen carefully to this. If these laws vanish from before me, declares Yahweh, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Do you understand what he said there? If the promises and the laws of Yahweh has ceased, then all of Israel will cease with it. Thus saith Yahweh, if the heavens above could be measured and the uh, foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I would also cast off the seed of Israel for all that they have done, declares Yahweh. So this planet we're living on, it can't be measured. Men have some scientific uh, equations. They think they know a lot, but it's, it's just in their own mind and their imagination. Yahweh knows the exactness of this down to the atom. And each atom is like a little uh, solar system in itself. And then it magnifies and becomes whatever he wants it to become. It's the pattern that Yahweh has created his people by. All we need to do is just get back to the basics and read and understand our letter from home and find out what Yahweh wants us to do and enjoy it. Be filled with his glory 
be filled with his understanding and his promise. See, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, that the city shall be built for Yahweh from the tower of Haniel and uh, to the corner gate. And the measuring line shall again extend straight ahead to the hill Gareb. Then it shall turn toward Goa. And all the valley of the dead bodies and the uh, and of the ashes and all the fields as far as the Wadi Kidron to the corner of the horse gate toward the east is to be uh, set apart to Yahweh. It shall not be plucked up nor torn down forevermore. When Yahweh refaces this earth, it'll never be torn down anymore. That's our promise. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 1. And after six days, Yeshua, and see, it's not all Old Testament. Uh, the Old Testament is just as fresh as the New Testament, but the New Testament refers back to the Old Testament. And you want to know why Yahshua come? He said, Yahshua took Kepha and, and uh, Yaakov and Jochanan his brother and brought them up to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transformed before them. Now you imagine that. You, you'd be sitting uh, in a conversation with somebody and they'd just be transformed. And his face shone like the sun and his garments became as white as the light. And see, Moshe and Eliyahu appeared to them, talking with him. And here they're witnessing this. And Kepha answered and said to Yahshua, Master, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three booths. Peter got inspired because he was in the presence of uh, esteem and he wanted to make three booths for them. That's the way we would feel. He says, one for you and one for Moshe and one for Eliyahu. In verse 5, while he was still speaking, see a bright cloud overshadowed them and see a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son, the beloved in whom I did delight. Hear him. Are the people today hearing what he's saying? Or are they just listening to a story about him and not understanding it? He says, and when he taught, uh, his, the taught ones heard, they fell on their faces and were much afraid. Matter of fact, I believe it would shock everybody if they really had it open to them like that. They couldn't understand it. But Yahshua came near and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. And having lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Yahshua only. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Yahshua commanded them saying, Now listen to what Yahshua is talking about here. Do not mention this vision to anyone until the son of Adam is raised from the dead. Peter and James and John don't even mention this until after I'm raised. And they didn't even know thoroughly in their heart and mind how soon it was going to be when he was going to die on the stake and die and then come up and be resurrected. It was a shock to everybody in the uh, sequence of how it, it was taking place. He said, and his taught ones asked him, saying, Why then do you, uh, uh, do the scribes say that Eliyahu has to come first? And Yahshua answer, answering said to them, Eliyahu is indeed coming first and shall restore all matters. And there's some... Uh, references there but uh, I'm continuing but I say to you that Eliyahu has already come and they did not recognize him but did to him whatever they wished they were in the presence of Eliyahu and didn't even realize it and in this way the son of Adam is also about to suffer by them see that that's some of the things that we need to get straightened in our thinking then the taught ones understood that uh, he had spoken to them about Yachanan the Immerser. And when they came to the crowd, a man came up to him, kneeling down 
to him and saying, Master, have compassion on my son, for he is an epileptic, suffering, suffers badly, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I have brought him to you, your taught ones, but they were unable to heal him. See, he was telling Messiah that he had already brought them to the disciples and they weren't able to heal it. He says, And Yahshua answered and said, O generation, unbelieving and perverted, how long shall I be with you? Well, that was 2,000 years ago, thereabout, and we're still per perverted and unbelieving in this generation. He says, How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. It means that we need to have the urgency that Yahweh is expecting us to believe his word and expecting us to receive his word and be functioning in the will of Yahweh. He said, And Yahshua uh, rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was healed uh, from that hour. Then the taught ones ca uh, came to Yahshua by himself and said, Why were we unable to cast him out? See, that's our question today. And Yahshua said to them, Because of your unbelief, For truly I say to you, If you have uh, belief as a mustard seed, you know what a mustard seed is? It's not the green called mustard greens. It's the mustard seed that uh, grows the mustard that you have in the jar. Well, the, the little bitty yellow things that's in that uh, mustard is mustard seed. That's how small they are. You shall say to the mountain, move from here and there, and it shall move. And no matter shall be impossible for you. He's telling us if we just could get our minds on him and have our faith as a mustard seed, we could get anything done. Just, just that simple. But this kind does not go out except through the prayers and fasting. Verse 22. And while they were staying in Galil, Yahshua said to them, The son of Adam is about to be delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised up. And they were deeply grieved. <coughs> and this was the time when he was uh, uh, giving them the expectation of his death and warning them. And we're continuing. He says, And when they came into uh, Kafar Nahum, those who received the tax came to uh, Kepha and said, Does your teacher not pay tax? See, Yeshua is walking around and these tax collectors, you know, we've got tax collectors right now. Anything you do, you've got to pay tax. You can go out and have a big party and take in some money and they won't tax out of it. That, that's what... Uh, they were going. Uh, verse 25. He said, Yea, and when he came into the house, Yahshua spoke to him first, saying, What do you think, Shimon? From whom do the sovereigns of the earth take toll or tax? From their own sons or from the strangers? And Kepha said to him, From the strangers. Yahshua said to them, Then the sons are exempt, but lest we cause them to stumble. Go to the sea, cast in a hook, take a fish that comes up first, and when you have opened his mouth, you shall find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Yahshua knows how to pay our taxes when we get on the right page with him. When we come to the understanding of what he's talking about to his set-apart people, we can let Yahweh pay our taxes. May Yahweh bless and keep you.